One of the really cool new features in Logic 10.5 is the addition of a step sequencer, which is a new way of inputting MIDI information. So you can use it as an alternative to playing your notes in real time or clicking the notes in on the piano roll. It works for all instruments, but it's especially useful for drums. To start using Step Sequencer, what we need to do is control click and instead of creating MIDI region, which we would do to use the piano roll, I'm going to click Piatin region. That then brings up this Step Sequencer view and I can see I've got all my notes laid down from top to bottom, starting from the kick, going through the drum kit and ending on this mid tom at the top. What I can do then to get the notes going is just click. And that will insert a note anywhere I push. So let's just draw a pattern in. If I want to add some extra parts, maybe the snare or a clap, just click that row. If you want to hear it, just hit spacebar, which will play the whole project, or this little preview icon here, which will just play the current step sequence. You can then edit it by deleting notes or clicking them back in. If you want to change the length of the step sequence, you can change it in this top right from 16 to make it twice as long, 32, to then navigate between the bars, just use this little selector tool at the top. We can also shorten it down, but I'm going to keep it at 16 for the time being. The other option we have in this view is by changing the resolution. So at the moment, we're quantizing to 16th notes. If I change that to 32th, it means each note lasts for half as long. Or I can change it down to apes to essentially double the length of time I'm playing with. Note that this does it for the whole pattern, not per note. To change the velocity of a note, you can go to these subheaders. So this little arrow here on the hi-hats, for example, will show me velocities. Now I've got a constant string of notes here, so I might want to vary them. I can just click and drag this down. Maybe every other one I want to be slightly different. And that will change the velocity of each of these notes. I also have the option of randomizing this. Just control click, randomize velocity. You also get this little header for note repeat. What this does is it splits these beats down and subdivides them. So if I click on these hi-hats again, maybe I want this one to be a double note in the region. Change that to two. You can get some quite extreme sort of a trap style hi-hat kind of triplet effects on this. It's definitely the quickest way of getting those effects without having to draw them all in. The other option we have is a chance. So I can change from note repeat to chance. And what that would do is it will mean that basically you can randomize the occurrence of the notes. So maybe I don't want this little rim to happen every single time. Maybe I want it to only happen 50% of the time. Just move all these down to 50% or so. And that way they'll play approximately every other time. Really useful if you want to use this pattern for an entire track you can get a bit of subtle variation in. So it didn't happen that time. Skip that one.
you can also use step sequencer for melodic patterns. So again, I've got a keyboard instrument up here, create pattern region, and this gives me a all the notes laid out chromatically, and again, I could just draw them in. Note that the notes it gives you will be tied to whatever key signature you've picked at the top for your project. So I've chosen C minor, which means it'll only show me keys from C minor. The other option I have for clicking in the notes is changing this to melodic. What this gives me is just the one note. But then by using the submenus, I can change the notes here. Again, it will snap to the key signature. So let's put that arpeggio in. I also have this tie function which just joins the note into the next one. extra notes if you like with the usual step pattern. The other thing we have is new pattern loops. So if you go to your Apple loops you will find you can pick pattern loops. And these are preset patterns. You can just drag it in to a track. When you drag it in, if you drag it into a blank track, what it will do is it will actually create the instrument for you that it thinks you should use. So you can just drag one straight in below and it will load this Chrome Crusher bass patch. And again, you can double click and you can edit so maybe I want to delete a few notes or change the velocity of a few notes. We can do that in the same way we did for the drums. The other thing you can do in this view by using the, um, well, any of the patterns will work, whether you've played them in yourself or you've picked a loop, is we can actually control some automation. So what I can do is I can add a new row. I go to automation. And let's go to Alchemy, and let's go to Cutoff, so I can automate the cutoff. And I can just draw in a few changes, create a bit of random, there we go. If I use my drop down menu, I can then pull some of these up and set them down. Maybe I'll start it low, and let's have a sort of automation, like cutoff rise. And then a fall. The other thing we can do with this again is randomize it. So control click, randomize automation, and that will give us all kinds of weird and wonderful options just to vary up the, the patterns really. The final kind of options you have in this, if I go to my eye, load up the information, you'll see you've got playback modes. So I could have my cutoff going forwards, or I can have it going backwards, which means it will start from the end and then go to the front. I can have it go forwards and backwards, or I can have it randomly, which should just put random little cutoff squelches in. Just put them anywhere, really. You've got this information view on pattern to change the number of steps, separate, play back modes, again, forwards, backwards, forwards, and backwards, or random, or down to every individual step. So you've got loads more information just by using this. You can go into pretty good detail on this. It's just a new way of playing around and, you know, a different way of inputting information. As I said, really useful for drums, but all the automation kind of changes you can do give some really nice options for other instruments too.